This video looks at Dynamic Matrix Control, or DMC. So far in this chapter, we focused on GPC, but if you look into the early days of predictive control, you'll find that the DMC algorithm was far more popular in industry. And you might wonder, well, what are the differences between DMC and GPC? This video then is going to give a quick overview of DMC, leading to a discussion of why further study actually might not be particularly useful. The first set of videos in the MP series set out the foundations of a typical algorithm. So we said you needed unbiased predictions and an unbiased cost. And this was an example of a typical cost that we used. Now, what you'll find is that DMC tends to use an equivalent performance index to GPC. So that is, this term here is not used very often. and Generally, the focus is on weighting the control increments. GPC and DMC then are in effect, and this is really important, the same algorithm and wearing slightly different clothes. You'll see what I mean. They use the same performance index. There it is, the sum of the tracking errors and the sum of the control changes. So what are the differences? Historically, DMC used step response models in order to find prediction. And that was because step responses could be easily found on a real chemical process and were well understood. GPC, on the other hand, tended to use transfer function models and allowed more explicit options such as what do you want the T filter to be or would you like there to be some form, some filter on the tracking errors. You could argue, therefore, that GPC was more of an academic product which allowed some nuances, whereas DMC was more of a pragmatic product, much simpler and basic. My argument would be that the differences are not real, because anything you can do with one, you could equally do with the other. And it's just a matter of, if you like again, what clothes do you want to wear today? Predictions in DMC, then, these were given in the videos in Chapter 1. So if you want to see those, please go and look at those again. You'll notice that the derivation was the same as for GPC, and you'll see the structure is quite similar. If I put the GPC predictions underneath, so you can see, with GPC, we had the same bit there. Now, I've been a bit naughty here, because I've used P for both, and perhaps I shouldn't have done, because they're actually different P's. But you'll notice the structure of the predictions for GPC and DMC are actually the same. But where are the differences? DMC has an L multiplying the past outputs, whereas GPC maybe has a Q. And these P's are different. And that, in simple terms, if you look back at the videos on the T filter, you remember what did the T filter do? It changed P to P tilde, Q to Q tilde, and DMC is just a similar variant of the same idea. We get a different matrix multiplying the past inputs and a different matrix multiplying the past outputs. The performance index is the same. And therefore, what I'm going to do if I want to solve for my control law is I'm simply going to take, I'm just going to rub some of this out so it doesn't uh, mess me up. I'm going to say my prediction matrix here, and I'm going to stick it into the performance index. And when I do that, you get this box at the bottom. I'm not going to dwell on those steps because they were covered relatively slowly in the first few videos on GPC. And if you really need to see the steps, you can go and look at those videos. Substituting the predictions into J then, this is what I get. If I go through the algebra and then say, right, what I want to do is I want to minimize J subject to the future control increments. And when you do that, you find that you get a minimum a bit like this. Now, again, I'm not going to dwell on the steps because we did it before. Please pause the video if you want to look at these slowly. If we combine all that together, what you'll find using the same observations in the earlier videos is that the DMC control law reduces to this box here, that the future input trajectory is given by some matrix H transpose H plus lambda I inverse times H transposed all times this vector here, our future minus P delta U past minus L Y past. And you'll see again, as before, that the optimum trajectory of future control increments depends linearly 
OK, so the keyword is linear on the future target and the past inputs and outputs. And that's exactly the same as GPC. Obviously, as before, all we want to do is extract the first value and therefore the control law reduces to this one here where all we've done is multiply by this E1 transposed. And there's our DMC control law. Now, if you compare DMC and GPC, you'll notice they look almost identical. These bits here in red, you'll see, are actually the same. Our future is clearly the same. And therefore, where's the difference? The difference is over here, that I have a different P matrix, an L instead of Q. And therefore, you could argue, if I was to put the T filter option in, the T filter option, we had P tilde delta U past minus Q tilde Y tilde past. I should have put the tildes there. And you'll notice it's along the lines of the same thinking. I've changed the mapping of the past to the future, and that will change the sensitivity. So we're using different P matrix, and DMC uses an L matrix, whereas GPC uses a Q matrix. And what's the fundamental difference? DMC puts much more emphasis on past inputs because we're using a step response model. And the main focus on the step response model is how do past inputs tell me about the future? And you have minimal emphasis on the past outputs. In essence, you just measure the current output and use only that. What's the significance of these differences? Well, it was noted that GPC was quite sensitive to noise, and that's why we had those videos on the T-filter. And that was because the Q matrix had quite a large norm. So there was a large mapping from the outputs and therefore from the noise through to the predictions. By comparison with Q, L is relatively small, and thus DMC is actually less sensitive to noise than GPC. Now, we'll demonstrate that after the videos on independent model GPC, which comes next, because independent model GPC has the same noise sensitivity as DMC. The downside of DMC is that the P matrix has got lots and lots of columns. You'll remember you had to take as many columns as was necessary until the truncation error became minimal. Now, we didn't really define what we meant by minimal, but it could mean a lot, a lot of columns. It could be 30 or 40 columns, as compared to GPC, where the P matrix might only have two or three columns. Summary. DMC arose because step response models were readily available and easy to understand. And it has a similar prediction structure to GPC based on Karima models. And basically, the control or derivation steps are equivalent. And in fact, the two laws are, in essence, equivalent, but just using a slightly different model. However, as the prediction matrices are different, the control law parameters are different. And what you'll notice is that DMC puts far more emphasis on the information in past inputs. These differences cause a change in the computational load. Now, that's probably not considered important anymore, though it was 30 years ago. But more critically, you get a change in sensitivity. Now, I'm not going to say whether that's good or bad, because it depends upon what sensitivity you're interested in. But it does cause a change in sensitivity. But critically, you don't get a change in nominal performance. So it's just like with the T-filter. Changes sensitivity doesn't change nominal performance.